Well, day three of our Big Apple adventure in New York City takes us to a national place of remembrance. The memorial honoring the victims of September 11th opened two months ago on the 10th anniversary of the attacks. It is a final resting place where visitors find peace and closure. The images of 9-11 are forever engraved in our minds. The planes disappearing into the buildings, the towers crumbling, and the deathly gray ash that covered everything and everyone nearby. A decade later, out of the ashes has risen an oasis in the heart of a bustling city. When you walk into this site, which is surrounded by construction on three sides and surrounded by west on the other side, you know, you're welcomed by this beautiful glade of trees and grass and green space, which, you know, didn't exist for the last 10 years. The memorial takes visitors on a journey. From the grove of white oak trees, visitors arrive at two pools on the exact spots where the Twin Towers once stood. You're welcomed by this massive waterfall, 30 feet deep, one acre in size, where the South Tower once stood. And in front of you, you see the names of all the people who died that day. And it's really a reminder of you know, what was here, what isn't here any longer, the loss that we experienced on that day, and, you know, and America's resilience, what's been built just 10 years later. This is my first time here, and I have to tell you, it gives you goosebumps. Yeah, I, I just had chills. It, it, it's a sacred place, it it's a burial place, it's a very powerful place. It is, it really is. I mean, when you approach these pools, and you don't really know what to expect, and we have people react in so many different ways. And it's really amazing to see the way people react. I mean, some people just want to touch the names and really connect with the people we lost that day and even people who had no personal connection. Bronze plates carry the names of the 2,983 people killed in the terrorist attacks in New York, at the Pentagon, and in Pennsylvania on Flight 93, as well as the six who died in the bombing of the World Trade Center in 1993. They are temperature controlled to be warm to the touch in the winter and cool in the summer. How are these names arranged? Are they alphabetical or? They're actually not alphabetical. The names are arranged by what we call meaningful adjacencies. So they're arranged by the relationships people shared in life. Um, at its broadest, the names start off arranged by where people were when they died. Aside from our first responders who are all listed here together, on the corner of the South Pool. Unfortunately, we lost 441 first responders that day. It was the greatest loss of life, the first responder community in a single day in America's history. And um, you can actually just reach right below the names and touch the water. Oh. Oh, so look it's at this that. everlasting life that's going on, you know, right under the names. So this was the footprint of the South Tower. This is the footprint of the South Tower. And these, this pool is an acre in size. Um, these are 30-foot waterfalls, making them the largest man-made waterfalls in North America. And um, you can see the center void where the water falls into, you know, it just disappears. And it's really a reminder of, of the loss of that day. You don't see a lot of people talking. You're just sort of taking it all in. Quiet place. It is. And, you know, the, the sound of the waterfalls has an effect that really can drown out the surrounding construction. A pear tree, now known as the survivor tree, is a symbol of resilience and determination. The tree was found barely alive under the rubble and nursed back to health. It now stands at a mighty 35 feet. Construction continues next door on one World Trade Center. It will be the nation's tallest building at 1,776 feet. It's really a unique time to be here because you're really watching the skyline of New York rise around you. Yeah. You know, in 20 years, when this place is complete, um, yeah, you won't be able to experience this re rebirth. We will never forget. We will never forget. Never forget. The architectural competition to design the memorial was the largest in history. There were 5,200 entries from 60 different countries, and Michael Arad was the winning architect. Admission to the memorial is free, but visitors need to reserve passes in advance. Security is very tight. If you're visiting New York, visit 911memorial.org. All the information you need about where to get tickets and what you have to do to get there. And if you'll be in New York over the holidays, don't miss it. Yeah, it's a very, very absolutely. moving experience. Yeah, it really is.